Hi, I'm Tim Smith, Aerial Sales Coordinator. Today what I'd like to do is take us on an easy stroll of the 100 foot Pierce Skyarm. Of course, like any of our chassis, the Skyarm starts with the chassis, the brain, and the backbone of the whole aerial. Let's walk up and look at the chassis. Chassis availabilities for the Skyarm are the Dash 2000, the Lance 2000, and the Pierce Aerial chassis. When selling an aerial device, of course, we always want to push our fine aerial features. 13-inch frame rail, um, taper leaf suspension, our large alternators that we can provide that a lot of our competitors can't, our HVAC systems, the roomiest cabs in the industry, our um, command power zone with our multiplexing and a PMC 4 all incorporated in that. Looking at the sky arm, the approximate overall height is going to be 12 feet 1 inches high. The overall length is going to be 45 feet. We're going to be using a 21,500 pound front axle and either a 54,000 pound or 58,000 pound rear axle, depending if we have a pump or a non-pump. The sky arm is available with a pump or without a pump. Of course, if we are using the pump, we're going to be using the 58,000 pound rear axle. Like all the other aerials, the Skyarm is utilizing the second generation body build pump module. We can push all the nice features of um, the, the second gen pump house, just like we do with the pumper or any other products. Boom support will be located behind the cab, just like our other aerial products. The body in the Skyarm is going to be aluminum. Um, pretty much what we see here is going to be the, the standard compartmentation. We are a little bit limited on compartmentation towards the back here because we have such a large turntable. Lap doors and roll-up doors are available. Now when selling our body, again, this is where we really want to push our second generation body build. Um, our steel substructure, um, the rubber isolators to allow the body to move side to side, front to back. Remember with our aerials, our body supports are mounted directly to the chassis frame rail. A lot of our competitors mount their body supports to the torque box. The big disadvantage to this is when they're all operating at the scene, they stick the ladder off the side, the torque box twists. Now your body twists along with the torque box. You can't open your compartment doors. No matter when we're operating this device, we always can open our compartment doors. Um, the torque box is independent from the chassis frame rail, so we're not any twist that's generated into the torque box is not generated into the uh, substructure of the body or the, the chassis frame rail itself. Our water tank availabilities, we can go from 150 gallon tanks to 200 gallon tanks all the way up to a 300 gallon water tank. The nice thing by barreling to put a 300 gallon water tank on a sky arm, or, uh, sky arm is that we can get the rating, a full quint rating. Now NFPA is going to be changing the quint rating to 300 gallons. Um, if, in order to have the quint status rating, you'll be required to have a 300 gallon water tank. Uh, years in the past, that was always a problem with the platform type devices, the large water tank. We now can put a 300 gallon water tank on the Skyarm. That's a nice big advantage. Again, we talked about the torque box. We're using a solid steel torque box, just like the same style that we're using on our PAL type products. It's more of the taller hollow torque box. With that uh, availability, we do have the possibility of having full depth compartments all the way, um, like you do with the, the PAL type products. So if, we, if a hole shoot w wasn't required on this device or less holes, we could have full depth compartments all the way in, all the way up, just like our PAL type products. 24 inches deep all the way up. Nice big um, advantage. Um, that's a big selling advantage for us that a lot of times we forget but that causes our competition a lot of havoc because they can't give full depth compartments all the way up. So if we can get that spec in, that's a big advantage to you. They'll have to take exception to it. Of course, air bottle storage is um, available in the fender wells, just like on any of the pumper style or pumpers or aerial bodies that Pierce um, generates. We'll work our way back to the rear of the truck. At, at the back of the truck, again, like our rest of our aerial devices, we're utilizing a roll-up door at the rear of the torque box. Ladder storage is inside the torque box, just like all the rest of our aerial family. 
The nice thing with the aerial, with the ladders being stored in the torque box, of course, they're outside the, the weather. We don't have to worry about dirt and ice and uh, snow building up on the ladders themselves. We do have a ladder keeper as standard to prevent the ladders from migrating back against the, the door. Again, remember, the torque box is totally enclosed. The front, the sides, the top, the bottom. So no moisture or snow or road um, grit can get up into the torque box. At the rear of the truck, we have two hole chutes, one each side. You'll notice the length of, of the hole or the um, hole chute here, very long. We changed the style of the torque box when we went, or the style torque box here is a little bit different than, than like on the 100 foot platform. It's more like the ladder, so we can get the truer, longer um, hole chutes. Now, what we did with the water tank is make it a more narrow, more like a rectangle tank, more narrow and longer. And we're putting the hose sh chutes on each side of the water tank. This is really going to help aid the firefighters in repacking holes quicker and faster, saving them a lot of time. Now they can just pull the hose straight up. Uh, that was sometimes a, a complaint from firefighters, so we should um, have that solved real, real quick here with this. Now each bed will hold 500 feet of large diameter hose. Now in the vent, you can uh, mix match now also with the hose beds. If somebody wants to carry 300 feet of three inch hose or 400 feet of um, two and a half inch hose, you can mix match now. The nice thing also, if somebody only wants to carry 500 feet of hose, is now you can have full depth compartments all the way down to one side. Um, so you can have the full 24 inch deep compartments. At the rear of the truck, our stabilizer setup is a little bit different. What we have on the Skyarm is a separate control box that we slide out and it's on a coil cord. Nice feature with this is it's a 15 foot coil cord. We can walk um, around the truck to set up the stabilizers. Remember NFPA says you have to physically see the stabilizers when you're setting them up. With the coil cord that works very uh, nice. It allows me the, uh, the flexibility to move in around. Nice easy box. As you can see the, the control, no, I got a part of me here, I got to kind of hold the mic in the box here. The box is, is a really user-friendly box. What we have is the controllers to run the stabilizer out. Simply we push it out in the outward motion and when we want to push it down to the ground we simply push it down on the control. Once the stabilizer is out and down then we can come over and we have an auto leveling assist. We push the auto level assist down, that will automatically level the truck. So simply all we need to do is run the stabilizer out, down, touch it firm on the ground, and all four of them, then we push the auto assist, that will automatically level the truck. Very nice feature. And you can see it's a nice compact box. which stores up inside. It's a little look and the thing stores up out of the way. And of course we can close the door to keep it with outside the weather. We do have a five inch rear intake to the aerial, same as all our existing apparatus. The aerial drain is located at the rear, just like our PALS and PAP type products. A nice feature with the Skyarm is a rear control panel. It is removable. We simply can pull the pin on the side here Got to excuse me for getting in front of you. And we can slide it out. Now in the event that we would have any type of electrical failure with the rear control panel, you can see we easily can just remove the Plexan glass and service the electrical systems. If it's a relay or a solenoid, we can simply get in there to uh, replace that. On, on this guy, we're utilizing the uh, H-style stabilizers. Now I'm going to show you how we set up the stabilizers. We simply pull the control panel out, bring the coil cord out. Now you're going to notice that the high idle is engaged automatically as soon as I start to engage. And of course, I'm on from the sound. Once the stabilizer is in place, every time I stop, the high idle is going to disengage and the alarm is going to stop. So it's warning people that we're setting up the stabilizers, but 
Every time I engage it, that's when it's going to automatically deploy the high idle and alarm. I can run both of them at the same time also. And we can run them independently, which I'm doing now. Now we're going to push down. We're utilizing the H style stabilizers. With H style stabilizers, we're using the box beam type construction. This totally protects all the cylinders. Again, remember a lot of our competitors have exposed cylinders. Now, they, you have a chance of damaging those cylinders at a fire scene. By being totally enclosed, we're protecting them not only from being damaged, but also from the elements of the weather also. We don't have to worry about busting any ice when we're retracting these at the end of a, a fire scene, especially in the northern climates in the east coast where we might get a lot of ice buildup during the winter type fire scenes. So we're totally protected. Again, we're utilizing proximity type switches, more of a reliable switch. Once we make a magnetic field contact, the switch is energized. Um, we're getting away from all the mechanical type arm switches, which are very unreliable. A big selling feature with the Skyarm is our ground penetration. What we have on the Skyarm is 20 inches of ground penetration. Twenty inches. By having twenty inches of ground penetration, that allows us to be able to set this truck up on a ten degree slope and run this aerial full capacity. Now on grades for up and down, we can run at six degrees a six degree slope and run at full capacity. We can level the truck and run it at full capacity. Those are some big features on the Skyarm that are going to cause a lot of havoc with our competitors. 20 inches of ground penetration, 10 degree side to side, full capacity, 6 degree front to back. We can run full capacity. Again, we're still utilizing the stabilizer pins. Um, in the event that there would be a catastrophic failure with the holding valve, the, the um, stabilizer cannot collapse and come down. Again, it's more of a precautionary thing and most people feel comfortable in, in the aerial industry. I know some of our competitors are pushing that, you know, our setup times are faster because we don't have to pin. Well, I feel more confident having a pin in there. You know, it's just a holding valve that's holding that just like any of our competitors and it's a mechanical thing that, it, you know, it might be one, one in a million chance that thing failing, but you have that a possibility. We're just giving you some reassurance by having the, this, the pin, the pin inside. Now remember too, the pin just goes in the closest hole. If this is only a half hole here, we go down and, and pin it into the closest hole that we can get it in. This would prevent it if it, the uh, holding valve would fail, that the, it would rest up a pin and won't collapse and come down. Now with the stabilizers, remember short jack capabilities is the same on the Pierce Skyarm as any of our aerial products. So we can short, we can run the stabilizers all the way out on this side, and we can keep the stabilizers um, in on this side and just and drop them simply straight down. We can operate off this side of the truck full capacity. Rotation interlock is built in standard, so if we would try to bring it to the short set side, it simply is going to stop. It's going to keep us in that 180 degree working zone. With that, I want to walk over and show you the manual overrides with the stabilizers. In the event that we would have an electrical failure with the control panel and box, we simply can go on the passenger side wheel or step area and I'll show you where the manual stabilizers uh, uh, controls are. Okay, now the manual uh, control overrides are located on the passenger side of the truck. And I'm going to get Henry to, to uh, shut the, the motor off here so we can hear a little bit better. Here, in the event that we would have a failure with the main control panel that I showed you, the, the outrigger control box, we have direct hydraulic overrides located here. As you can see, we have the up and down for the left rear jack. We have um, up and down for the right rear jack. So we can control by these levers here each stabilizer individually. Another backup to the backup. Just giving you some more insurance and your customers more assurance that in the event that there would be some type of electrical failure that we still can run this device. We don't have this 
seven, eight hundred thousand dollar piece of equipment and we get a, a short and a solenoid or something and we can't use the truck. We still can manually operate the, the apparatus. With that, our next, we're going to look at the stairwell and then we're going to work our way up to the uh, turntable. Again, we're using nice wide, 24 inch wide stairs uh, with the Morton cast inserts, so it gives us a good non skid surface when walking up and down to the turntable. We do have the drop down step, we pick up the step, and we have the ex um, auxiliary step, so we always are meeting the NFPA um, ground the first step of 24 inches. Full handrails all the way up, um, so we have good um, handrail safety when we're climbing up and down on the aerial. Before we walk up to the turntable, I just want to point down the side of the ladder. Again, notice the lift cylinder on the, on the aerial is similar to our Pierce products. It's, located, it's positioned at a 45 degree lifting mode. So when we ask the ladder to lift, it simply starts to raise. A lot less pressure on the heel pins than on the cylinder rod itself. It simply just starts to, to raise. Notice there's holding valves on the cylinders themselves. Uh, so in the event that we would sever a hydraulic line, uh, the holding valve would just hold the ladder there. We can operate the ladder on one cylinder, just like all our other Pierce aerials. Now notice the Skyrim, it's kind of hard to see from here, but it's actually a four section um, steel aerial. It's all steel, certified steel. We're meeting all NFPA requirements with the Skyarm. Two to one safety factors, one and a half to one stability factors. We, are, we meet or exceed all the NFPA requirements uh, for the aerial. We'll work our way up to the turntable. Okay, like all our Pierce products, we are using a bread style hinge cover for the control panel. So easy, just up and down motion. Here's our main control panel. Now with the Skyarm, we're utilizing um, five controllers. These, these are the main control for extension, rotation, and elevation. We do have separate controls for the jib controls with indicator lights. So actually the fourth section of this aerial is totally independent from the main uh, ladder sections themselves. I can extend and retract the jib and I also can raise and lower it. Now the jib does have to be extended all the way out in order to lower the, the jib boom. Now these indicator lights will uh, light indicate when I can lower the jib boom, you know, ladder lower permitted, I'll get a green light. So that's, it's a nice user friendly option. We can go by the indicators that will help us. If we come to lower it and it doesn't lower, you can look down and we don't have a green light, we know why, why it's not allowing us to lower it. We have a main power switch up at the control panel. We'll get a green indicator light when we have power up here. It's a uh, twist motion. Um, now this is kind of nice in the event that we would get a runaway ladder for some reason. Uh, electrical wise the ladder would take off on us we simply can disengage the power and it kills all power to the controllers themselves. I'll show you later when we get up there but the Skyon platform does rotate and this is the rotation switch we simply which way we want to rotate the the basket it will rotate 28 degrees and I'll show you that later when we get up to the the basket we'll show you that how that um, rotates. There, now I can the basket leveling on the Skyarm is um, auto leveling. We never have to manually level it. It always will keep us level. Now I can override that on um, the control here, platform leveling override. I simply can pick up the safety switch here and either push the switch up or down to allow it to raise or lower. So we simply hold it here and I push this um, button over here. That will allow me to either raise it or lower it in the vent. Maybe you might have to bring it up to the, say you're close to a window and you can't get to the next floor, but if, you're, if you could raise the platform, you could get there. Um, you have that ability to do that. Monitor controls are located at both positions, up in the basket and here at the um, rear control panel if you have electric monitor. Of course, our hydraulic system pressure is here um, for our spot floodlights. Along alignment, if we're going to climb up and down the ladder, we want to get a green, or um, here's an amber light, make sure that your rungs are all in line. Bed alignment, we do have a bed alignment light. Once we get a green light here, we know it's okay to bed the ladder. We simply can lower the ladder. Stay
stabilizers is um, fully extended just tells us that the stabilizers are fully extended. If it would be short set, we would only have um, a green indicator on the light that the stabilizers are fully extended on. We do have an overload indicator alarm on here, um, located right here. If we would um, overload the platform basket, um, this lights up and it'll start to give us an audible warning. Of course, uh, breathing air is standard on all our platforms, it's the same with the sky arm. So we do have an air minder here and an NFPA required flow meter. We do have the intercom so we can um, talk back and forth. A two-way intercom is standard. Um, option to have a three-way intercom if you would like to have an intercom at the pump panel. Um, that's optional. I'd like to show you the, the manual overrides now to the main control panel, the lower control panel. Again, another backup. If we would lose power to these controllers for some reason, we would lose electrical power to these controllers, we still can run the ladder. Right underneath the turntable here we have direct hydraulic controls. Uh, we have a little, I call it like a poker here at the back of the turntable here. Now there's a label in here that tells us what function, what each function is. So we simply just take the little hook because we don't want to get inside here and have someone's arm in between there where you could pinch it. So we simply, nice and safe, we can um, be back out, away from the ladder and we can either pull to raise or to lower the platform. And of course we have the label right here to give us the instructions on what function each one is. Another backup um, to give some more confidence to you and to your customers than that there would be some type of electrical failure with the main control panel and that just simply locks in the back back here again. Like all our Pierce aerials we're utilizing rubber covered rungs giving us a good non-skid surface. Um, some of our competitors are using like neural type rungs. And remember, those neural type rungs can become very slippery. You know how aluminum tread plate is. Um, you get ice and water on, on there, how slippery that can get. Same with the neural and rungs. Remember the neural rungs, if they build up with any type of ice build up on there, they can fill in and now you don't have a, a non-skid surface. One, uh, one other thing to think about with the competitors with the neural and rung, it's always this way, like how this is on the, the rubber covered rung here. Now it's good non-skid surface this way, but there's no non-skid surface this way. If you would put your foot on here and slide over, you easily could slip and fall on the ladder. So this, the rubber cover run gives us good non-skid surface side to side and front to back. Of course, like all other aerials, we're using the K-brace style to give the ladder torsional strength. And we have nice, good, clean climbing access up and down the ladder with nice high handrails. Again, we meet and exceed all NFPA requirements. The rotation gear motor on the Skyrim is located underneath the turntable. It allows us a little bit more room for working and walking around the turntable. Again, you're going to find a turntable on the Skyrim to be very, very large and full 42 inch high handrails all the way around the platform to give us um, the protections so people can't fall off the platform. With that, I'm going to articulate the ladder uh, jib section and I'm going to show you some of the nice features of the jib section and of the platform basket.
Now here's where we really separate the men from the boys, the articulating jib section. This is the most unique feature of this whole product and this is where we really are heads over our um, competition. With the articulating jib section, this is a 15 foot um, jib, totally independent from the, the total or the rest of the ladder sections. So we can extend, retract the jib section and we can articulate it. We can articulate the jib 60 degrees below grade. Um, unspeakable in, in, this t in our industry here. We're using aluminum anodized waterway, same as we are on all other um, products. Again, it gives us um, good longevity, takes some weight out of the ladder. We don't have to have a big heavy waterway coming up. Aluminum anodized. As an option, you can get a inch and a half outlet with a hose box on the back of the sky arm. Now this is not a standard feature, this is an optional type feature. Um, actually you can have one each side if, um, if desired. So this is, this is a option. We do have handrails, so when we're at high elevations, we have good entry handrails to hang on to to get into the basket, and we do have a chain to fill in the gap so nobody could fall in between the transition. 110 volt lighting is optional with the sky arm. Um, you can have 110 volt lights, and that's all optional. We'll work our way up to the front of the basket here. The Collins 12 volt spot floodlights are standard. You get two of those as standard. Water monitor, you can have Akron or Elkhart, your choice. Um, electric or manual. Now the waterway will flow 1,000 gallons per minute. The nice thing with the waterway, it'll flow 1,000 gallons per minute at any angle, at any articulation, at any basket uh, position. So any, we're unrestricted with nozzle placement and water flow when we're running the sky arm. The sky arm is utilizing um, dual swing out doors. And again, now that the doors are swing out, we need some type of bar to prevent people from falling out of the basket if the doors were accidentally bumped. We do have a complete rail that goes all the way around with a latch in the center that we can unrelease it and it, it slides up over the top of us. So as we enter the basket, people can enter in and then we just lower it down behind us. Again, we meet all the intent of NFPA um, with the continuous handrail. Inside the bucket, we're utilizing a aluminum grate type floor, so it allows the water and debris to, to flow through. And then we have a complete heat shield underneath that, aluminum four-way heat shield. So it protects all the wiring and all the um, valves and the tubing for the waterway. Again, the control panel up in the, the platform is real similar to the lower control, control panel. We have our three individual main ladder controls. We have our separate jib controls. We have a platform overload, overload indicator. Um, up in the basket, this will give us the percentage, um, what, what loading we do have in there. Now we're utilizing a strain gauge type um, sensor at the bottom of the platform basket. It gives a real true indicator of the basket um, loading that's in the basket. Again, we can over, um, ride the platform leveling if we need to and it gives us our indicators um, that the jacks are fully extended, rung alignment and bed alignment. As standard we get two breathing air outlets in the basket. Uh, you can have optional breathing air that's no problem. Um, we just send in for SP. We can uh, put additional breathing air outlets if required. 210 volt receptacles come standard in the platform basket. Again attachments for our um, life belts. We have anchors on the back of the basket so we can attach our life belts in the basket. At the front of the basket we have our nozzle controls along with the flow minder so we can run all the controls from up here in the basket also. And again of course as standard we have our um, intercom system. Um, just talk back intercom system. Now looking up the jib section of the aerial I want to point out that, notice we're using the two extension cylinders as our handrail when we make the transition up and over the articulation portion of the ladder. 
that keeps us uh, protected and it gives us a good um, walk area with uh, continuous handrail up to make the transition. That's one problem with our competitors like the Bronto Skylift. You try to make that transition, it's very uncomfortable to make that transition area at that knuckle portion there. Um, that's where the sky arm is a big advantage over that. And again, it's a true lot wider ladder and nice um, steps going all the way up with high handrails. A lot higher than what they are on the Bronto Skylift. Now, remember the basket is um, auto leveling. We never have to manually level the basket. It'll keep us level at all times. So as we're running the aerial, the basket will stay level. And we do have the ability to override that if, if required. Another feature that I want to show you is how the basket will um, rotate 28 degrees to each side of the um, ladder. So what I'd like to do is illustrate that for you right now. Uh, we'll start up the truck before I get out of the basket and I'll show you that nice um, feature. This really allows us the ability to place the basket properly at a window or a roof line. If we didn't, if we got it to see an improperly placed a truck, we simply can rotate the basket to maybe parallel up to a window or a roof line or edge, ledge. Again, 28 degrees each side. Another nice feature with having um, plat foot platform rotation like this is we can get a greater monitor sweep. So if we had the nozzle to the side of the, the bucket, we also can rotate the bucket into the stream that we're flowing and gain another 28 degrees flow on a monitor. So we can get a whole, it'll be about 75 degree monitor sweep uh, with, with the monitor itself. Now there's only one other product in the industry that can do this, which is the Bronto Skylift that um, has the ability to have platform rotation. Otherwise the, the Skyarm and the, the Bronto are the only products. Again, a nice speckable feature is going to cause havoc with um, our competitors, especially with someone that's going to um, spec like a 100 foot platform and try to go against a 100 foot platform against you and the Skyarm. Gives you another tool, um, speckable tool. With that, we'll do a, a quick um, overview again of the big highlights on the, the sky arm. Um, I'm going to hand the mic to the photographer here for a sec. Let's go on, let's go on the big hitters of, of, this, of the sky arm here. Remember it's the, the Skyarm is the only articulating aerial ladder platform in the industry. Now, there are other articulating type devices in the industry. Remember, Snorkel has a um, 85, 75, and 65 foot um, articulating um, platform, but it's a boom construction with a platform device on it. Bronto Skylift that E1 sells also has articulation, but again, that's a boom construction with a side egress in their HDT series, a side egress ladder on the side of the ladder. It's kind of a flimsy aluminum ladder. It doesn't give you a lot of security climbing up and down it. But where we really um, kick these boys is horizontal reach. Our Pierce Skyarm has a 92 foot horizontal reach. No articulating um, platform in the industry has that great of a horizontal reach. The 85 foot snorkel is only 45 feet, the Bronto Skylift is only 60 feet. So we have a big true advantage there. And that was always a problem with some of the articulating type devices. They're really made for the urban areas. If you pull up next to the building, if you looked at their, their reach chart, it runs on a radius. And that's a big disadvantage for them. Um, a lot of them were made for the European type markets where everything's built right next to the road. Uh, and of course in America here, um, setbacks are more common than um, buildings being placed close to the road. So that's a big advantage, a big selling point for us is if we spec in, it must be um, 92 foot horizontal reach, that's going to cause a lot of havoc to the competitors. Again, we meet and exceed all NFPA 1901 requirements. We're using the same type of hydraulic system as our existing aerials. We're using all Parker Hannifin components, um, load sensing hydraulic pump, 
The nice thing with the load sensing hydraulic pump is we're not building any heat up in the system. We don't require an oil reservoir on our hydraulic system. It simply performs when we ask for the uh, function, and then it goes back to an item mode. So we're never building up extreme heat in our hydraulic system. Get a three-year warranty with the hydraulic system, standard with the Skyarm, same as any other aerial product that we build. The Skyarm stabilizer control, again, we had the nice remote control with the 15-foot coil cord at the rear. Allows us the ability to move around at the fire scene to, to really see the stabilizers when we're setting them up. The auto assist leveling is a really nice feature. We can simply run the stabilizers out, touch the ground, and the auto assist will automatically level the device. Um, so there's no human error, no, no other features, so it's set up is a lot faster at the fire scene. You hit the auto level switch and it simply um, will level the truck. I'm not sure if I mentioned before, but the stabilizer stance on the Skyarm is 18 feet, same as our 100 foot platform. Again, if we're short jack, then it's only 13 feet. So 18 foot is the um, stabilizer stance on the Skyarm. And remember, again, we have 20 inches of ground penetration. So once that stabilizer touches the ground, we have 20 inches of ground penetration that that will push down. It allows us to set up on very uneven and severe grades. Remember, the ladder and the platform support is all built of high certified uh, steel. And we know all the effects that aluminum or heat has on aluminum, so we want to use all our benefits of steel versus aluminum when we're selling the Skyarm, just like any of the other Pierce um, products. Remember, the Skyarm can go six degrees below grade to plus 75. The jib can be articulated to 60 degrees below horizontal, so it really allows us to get up and over parapets, over down drain story or drain sewer areas. Um, over walls, so it really gives us the, a lot of flexibility. Um, this device is really unique and it's something that we can really push and sell to the fire service. Again, 750 pound payload capacity, not flowing water, 500 pounds when we're flowing water. We can flow a thousand gallons per minute, unrestricted, no matter if the jib's articulated, the basket's rotated, unrestricted, thousand gallons position thousand gallons per minute at any angle and position. Platform can rotate to 28 degrees each side. The 92 foot horizontal reach, again which is a big, big um, plus for us. We want to definitely push all our fine feet uh, chassis features, the 13 inch frame rails, the taper release suspension, our H HVAC systems, um, our roomy cabs, our um, big horsepower motors that we can put in our chassis, the alternators, the large alternators, you know, if we spec in a 400 amp alternator, you know that causes the competition just major grief. And on aerials, you know, large, larger alternators are really required. There's so, so much electrical draw on aerials that um, you really got to have a larger alternator anyhow. Push our second generation body build and mounting. Um, big plus there, and we want to use all our advantages just like you do when you're selling a pumper with the, for the body and the, and the mounting. Again, remember the body um, supports are being mounted to the, chassis, to the chassis frame rail, not to the torque box. So we can open up compartments at the fire seam. We're not uh, mounting it to the torque box if it twists that you can't open a compartment like some of our competitors do. Again, one source solutions. We build it all. We back it all up with the warranty. So if you have any problems with this unit, we build the aerial, we build the chassis, and we build the body. Again, uh, standard warranties uh, include 10-year structural warranty on the cab, 10-year structural warranty on the body, a 10-year structural warranty with the um, aerial device, ladder, torque box, and stabilizers, um, lifetime warranty with the, the frame rails, and of course our standard paint warranties. That's kind of a quick overview of the Pierce Skyarm. I hope you'll find this very informative and hopefully this will help you in the future with future sales. Thank you.